Hi everyone, my name is Fredrik Wermeling. I have a research group at Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. And in this video, I will show you some of the basic features uh, related to using this software that we call GreenLister. And this software can be used to design uh, custom CRISPR screens as been described in, in several of these videos in this, um, this set of videos. And in this particular video, we're gonna talk about how basic features using the Gecko version to library. All right, let's get started. So this is how um, the web interface of, of GreenList look. Um, you'll see that there are four boxes here that we'll go into in detail. Um, there's these three boxes down here that really needs your attention when you're designing a library. Um, you can also see that there are links for more information, like there, there's here, there's here, there's here. There's a link there with information, and there is one with here. Um, and the, the exercise that Greenness does for you is that you provide a list of genes and Greenlisted uh, suggests a uh, long list of, um, or the length of list is related to how many genes you have, but the Greenlisted green list suggests a CRISPR library that you should make to, uh, to make a screen targeting all of these genes. And basically the way it does it is that you either upload yourself a reference library or you use the gecko version 2 that's embedded and this then contains uh, uh, lists it, it contains lists of, of suggested gRNAs to use for for particular genes and then you here in the input box you um, you tell the software which genes you want to target and of course um, here um, as you can read in the how to use file um, I think it's very what I think it's very useful for, for example, if you have differential expressed gene from an RNA-seq experiment and you want to understand, you see that certain genes are up and down regulated and you want to see which of these are actually relevant for the phenotype you're observing, you can input all of them here and make the screen and, and, and see where, where there's a phenotype. Um, you can consider targeting uh, different uh, subsets of genes like kinases, phosphatases, um, uh, known drug targets, uh, you could um, target genes that is part of a, a particular signaling pathway, like the toll-like receptor pathway, for example, that we have been interested in. So we know we have a phenotype when we stimulate this pathway, but we don't know which genes are involved, for example. And you could just take all those genes and input them here and then make a screen for it to try to understand which are the essential genes in this phenotype. Etc. As mentioned, there, there's some more uh, information how to use here. And then in options uh, section here, you have the possibility for some ranking from some sequence modification and etc. And the most important part here is, as, as we talk about, the sequence modification because um, as you input a list of genes here, the software will then identify a number of um, uh, spacer sequences or gRNA sequences um, that will target these genes. But to actually make a CRISPR library, you need to uh, clone these into some kind, of, some, kind of, some kind of vector or some kind of plasmid. And for that, you need to have uh, some adapter sequences. So the, this is the, probably the most important um, uh, functionality here. So you have reference library, you input your genes, you tell the software what you need for cloning purposes, and then you press run, basically. That's the, the, the way to do it. Okay, uh, so let's um, make uh, an example here then uh, using the Gecko version 2 library. So we were, we were very happy that, that we are allowed to use this, this library. Um, and as you can see here, you just choose which one you want to use. So it comes actually in a human A and a B version and a mouse A and a B version. And the A contains three unique gRNAs per gene and the B contains three unique genes per gene, sorry, three three unique gRNAs per gene, as, and thus the human A plus B and the mouse A plus B then contains six unique uh, gRNAs per gene. Uh, so you probably will use the A plus B human or A plus B uh, mouse. The non-targeting constructs are, um, we they are actually part of these libraries too, uh, but we just put took them aside and I will make a video about that later. Um, specifying how uh, how you can use um, how you can make a small library with non-targeting construct because uh, this is something of course you need as, as a control for your screens all right so let's say that we choose the mouse a plus b here 
it's as easy as that and I, I can actually show you here so this is the um the the uh, the gecko library and this is the version two the second generation of it is come from the feng shang lab uh, and as you'll see um, there are in this page you don't see it actually on the screen here but there are um you'll see here uh, the, these are our the publications that these libraries are coming from so please if you use them please cite uh, the appropriate papers and and what you can see and actually it's it's you don't see it on the screen but it's the, the full uh, reference is below here um you can if you want you can download these these libraries so let's do that these are fairly big so it'll take a while for it actually um so uh, and as it's downloaded we can open it so i just pressed it just showing you a little bit how it looks and these are fairly large now so it's six journeys per gene uh, 20,000 genes roughly and some controls so it's it's approximately 120,000 gRNA sequences here and basically what you see here is, so this is the, the how a reference library could look so you have in the first column here you'll see that there are different genes and in this column here so column one column two column three and column three in this particular library you'll see that there are suggested gRNAs um, so basically, if you input and say you want to target MAGI1, MAGI1, uh, what the software is going to do, it's going to go, come in here and it's going to collect those uh, six corresponding gRNAs to that gene. And then it's going to add adapter sequences, etc. So it's, it's um, in many ways not that complicated, of course, but it's very useful uh, when you are, want to target a large set of genes and um, and if you do this manually, which is which is absolutely possible, which we also have done a lot in the past, uh, there's a, a risk that you do you introduce errors, etc. And, and as you see, this is much faster. Okay, so we have our reference library. We have genes that we're interested in. My group is working on the immune system, so let's target some interleukins here. We can what we could do is is writing them down like this. Um, I'm gonna buy uh, intentionally. I'm, I'm writing IL8 here now, interleukin 8, which is not uh, found in the mouse system. So you'll see there will you get an error there. You can also see here um, that um, I'm, sorry, I'm trying to show different things that you can do, but and, and the, the actually the point is that it doesn't matter, the software can understand anyway. So if you by accident or uh, introduce more spaces here and um, it doesn't matter the, the software will understand it anyway and also importantly if you by some reason will introduce the same g name several times the software will understand this and remove these duplicates and i'm saying this because a lot of the lists that we are using and you can as mentioned go to the how to use file here to see some of the strategy strategies we are using to identify sets of genes um, a lot of those li lists could contain duplicates of genes um, it's, it's very very common actually um, but it doesn't matter okay so then we upload a list of genes here and and just emphasizing that the power of this software is that you could input thousands of genes here um, if you just want to target like here uh, five different genes it's not i mean it, it's it's useful still but it's it, the software the power is that you could introduce, introduce a lot of genes and it pretty rapidly will design your library um, okay then we have a ranking feature here and i have made a, a particular um, a video about ranking but i just want to mention that the software in itself does not do any ranking and by ranking i mean um that um that so by, by ranking it's it's the the feature of uh, being able to select a set of gRNAs that would have be better than others so for example this reference library as mentioned contains six gRNA per gene there are some libraries that contains thousands of gRNA per gene. And if you would use those libraries, which, and there are some of them are great, um, but you wouldn't want to make a screen with thousands of gRNA per gene. So then having a ranking possibility and basically being able to say to the software, I just want to use the best five gRNAs or the best 10 or the best four or best six or whatever you want to do, uh, could be very useful actually. Um, 
and as mentioned, I talk more about the ranking in, in other in another video. Um, but but this is the functionality basically. You can tell the software um, to just you don't want to have uh, that many, um, or you, you want to extract a, a particular number of GeoNets per gen. Having said that, um, and just highly want to emphasize is that GeoNets does not rank uh, by itself. It doesn't have any algorithm to understand what is a good or bad journey. Ranking is, is only related to if the reference library by itself has a, a ranking possibility that it's provided in there. And uh, actually the Gecko version 2 does not have a, a, a ranking. Um, they don't provide any any um, any score saying that this journey is better than that one. However, we implemented in this library so that you actually can do a sort of ranking. So you could choose the mouse A plus B library, which contains six journeys, but you can say we only want to have five. Um, and what it's going to do then is only it's going to go in there and it's going to take the five first. So it's not going to um, to this particular feature related to the gecko here but so it's not but it's, it's not going to do any it's not going to mean that those five are better than the one that's excluded or not but it, it's it gives you a little bit more flexibility okay so that's ranking then we go to sequence modification as mentioned i think this adapter sequences is the most useful one so for your depending on how your plowing strategy goes you would introduce some adapters here i did it just randomly here um Trim could be very useful. Uh, sometimes the the gRNAs that are suggested in a reference library actually contain some sequences that you don't want to have there. Commonly, for example, the PAM sequence could be in there. So these uh, this gives you the possibility then to use such libraries and just tell it to basically remove three bases in the th three prime end, which could be the PAM sequence then, or in the five prime end, depending on which which order they they written. Um, so this is a, a feature that could be useful, um, and 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 the idea with with this is that it'll give you the possibility to adjust the um, adjust the software to when there's changes in the understanding of how to to make a, a, a good GRN because we're probably going to have changes to that understanding with time. So that the hope here is that we'll be able to to. To do some changes to the gRNA. So, for example, if you figure that we want the first base of the gRNA to be an, a G, you could trim away the first gRNA and then just add a G there, for example. So, it, this gives you that, that possibility fairly easily. So, adapter sequences trim, and then we go to identify sequences. And this is uh, giving you the possibility to have the software identified particular sequences in the gRNAs. And why would that be relevant, you can ask yourself. Well, cons let's consider that you're using a restriction-based cloning method for, for making your libraries. And let's say you have BSA1 here um, in your cloning process. Uh, if you then would have a GGTCTC, which is the, 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 the sequence that this enzyme is recognizing in your gRNA, um, there is a, a big, or that journey would be lost because it would be cleaved by the enzyme in, during your, your cloning. So it could be useful to, to um, put this in here. And here I just want to mention that um, actually the, it's, it's, it's not that advanced, so you could just write in the restriction enzyme. You, you have to write everything yourself, and it's actually you can write whatever first. So you could, you could consider writing like GCGC. Um, colon gc gc for example or gct or it, it doesn't matter but but basically what's going to do then is that if this sequence here is identified it's going to output that so you you could say whatever you want right it could be hello output hello if gc tga is found for example All right so that's identified sequences um and then finally output here in here i think that what you what is it could be useful is to to introduce um, a name, so you easily can find your 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 result later. So let's say this would be how you write today's date in, in Swedish, for example, and this would be an IL test, for example. Or you, I, I leave it up to you how you want to define your files, but that that could be a way of doing it. So then we have our reference library. We have some genes we want to use, and we have um, 
used some options here uh, or uh, some ranking, some sequence modification, and, and we've given it a name. And then we press run. And here I want to emphasize that or mention that now it was pretty pretty rapidly, but uh, and this it could take a little while uh, because of the fact that sometimes these, um, I mean, if you have a very complex library and you have a very complex or long list of genes, of course, it takes longer time. But so here you see what's what happened. You can see some of the sequences that it found it didn't find any BSA1 sites. It did find one GCGC, and I don't remember what hello was, but it, it did identify two of them at least. So we download results, and it's you can't see on the screen, but it came up at least on my computer down here. We press it, and then you can see you get several different output lists. So in my computer, they come down in the download folder, and they have the name as as we uh, as we gave it. There is a user input parameter here that's showing basically what you uh, ask the software to do, all the parameters. Um, in this case, there's a not found list. And as mentioned, um, I intentionally put in IL-8 here, which is not um, one usually doesn't talk about in the mouse context. This is more a human gene. Um, in the mouse, you would talk probably about CXL1 and CXL2. Um, but the, the functionality is important that if you ask the software to make uh, a screen, a, a library, suggest a library against a long list of genes. Um, you want to have a report if some of them, if it, the software failed doing that. And that's coming up in this not found list. So here you you just know that, okay, IL-1, it didn't manage to make something against IL-1, IL-8, sorry. Um, okay, so let's think about that. Let's see, is there an alternative name? Or maybe we can use another list to make this screen or to identify GNAs for this. In this particular example, of course, as mentioned, I late is not something we discuss in the mouse field. So uh, you would go in here and I then realize, oh yeah, okay, CXL1, CXL2 might be better to, to, to introduce. Anyway, uh, we have a compact output list that just shows you basically that the uh, what the library contains. So IL2 has five GNAs, IL4, there's five, and et cetera, as expected. And then we have the main output list, which looks like this. And um, as you know, for text files, they are not always that easy to understand <laughs> if you just look at them like this. Um, what you could do, though, is to copy it and then just go to Excel and paste it. And when you do that, you, you see that they line up in, in columns in, in a much more uh, intuitive way. So here you see, I'm, I'm not going to go through all here, but there's a lot of information here. Uh, some of the information is coming from the original uh, library. Um, but the most important, and you can see there is, it suggests names to use for these different, a short name, a long name, um, like that. And the most important one is actually this one, the GRNA target sequence with adapters. And here you see the suggested then um, spacer sequence or gRNA sequence and the adapters there. And remember now that we also train in this. Um, depending on how you how you want to use your your cloning strategy or your pro process these oligos, here's also a reverse complemented sequence. So some people are you order both sequences and then let them anneal. Others would just order this one and PCR amplify it. Um, but in general, this is what I the way we use it. We copy this column, we send it to the company that synthesized these as oligo, um, an oligo pool, and then um, amplify the PCR, amplify them, um, and then uh, clone them into um, some some uh, vector, depending on, on, on how we're going to do the experiment. Um, and then. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we use oftentimes use Gibson assembly for, for the cloning, but there's different ways of doing it. But this is the most important one. Um, here, I'm just going to format that because it doesn't look. Uh, here you can see, so you get the information about the sequence links, the GC contents, and as mentioned here, uh, uh, you get uh, if there is some of the sequence that were identified, the, the software is going to tell you that. All right, um, so that was. Let's go back to software. And so that was um, uh, how to use um, how to use greenlisted uh, basic uh, first uh, movie or, or instruction video. How to use it? Uh, use the gecko version two functionality. So okay, thank you.